to the 40th anniversary of the Brussels Open. It's so good to see you all here tonight. Help us celebrate this uh, this moment for us 40 years ago. I don't know. You guys may be that old, but I'm not. So uh, it's great to be in Cleveland. It is really fucking cold, but uh, it's nice to be here because it's all of you. That's why it's nice to be here. It's nice to see everybody and to be uh, with my people again. Yeah, so the, you know, at the time uh, that all these songs were written, we were just, Rodney and I were just talking about it back in the dressing room. Uh, it's funny because we have different memories of how the whole thing unfolded. We have different memories of how things unfolded and how the band came together and how the songs, uh, what time the songs were learned and, and how much we did in the studio once or if we went back in and cut another song. But then there's lots of stories floating around and none of them match up. So I don't know what that says. Uh, it's just more versions of, uh, of what happened, I guess. Let's uh, move on with the album now and go to the, um, the uh, second cut on the album. <laughs> Guitar. We love you, Jonah! Woo! 
loves you too, but you might have to see other people. <laughs> I stole that line from Michael Stanley. That's a great one. <laughs> this next song, though it's a breathless song, certainly a breathless song, the third uh, track on the album. Uh, the song was originally written during the last days of the Michael Stanley band. Really? <laughs> like I said, you know, there's lots of stories floating around. You never told me that. Yeah, it was written... Uh, I'm heartbroken. <laughs> <laughs> and we never did it, obviously, so I always loved the tune. I thought we'll do it in Breathless. So this is Let Me Down Easy.
Facebook, right? I had a memory pop up about 10 days ago. It's a picture of me on the road when I moved out to California uh, in 15, I guess. 2015. And I was saying how I was escaping the polar vortex. So I know what you've been through. I got here after the one this year, but uh, I was running away from it four or five years ago. <sighs> All right, uh, so this next tune, when we did this Breathless album, it was right at the beginning of, of all things, disco. <laughs> and I, I am the light disco. You know, I liked, I liked the Bee Gees and, and I liked a lot of stuff that came out at the time. I thought it's just another beat and it really does kind of lift you up and carry you along. My favorite disco stuff was, sort of disco, was like the Rolling Stones, Miss You. And I even liked, of all things, Do You Think I'm Sexy? <laughs> so, uh, the record company was adamant about us having a disco song, at least influenced on a record. And I said, that's no problem. You know, I, I think you can do a good rock disco song. And that's how this next one came along.
pretty sure that's the only disco song ever written about a guitar. Thank you. Well, that's side one. So now it's time to get up, go to the refrigerator, get yourself something to drink, get some potato chips, come back, turn the record over. Put it on side two. Deal. We had a demo, 
and uh, Mike Belkin had taken the demo uh, along with Nothing's Gonna Change My Mind and had played it for several different record labels and EMI America wanted to sign us and they wanted Nothing's Gonna Change My Mind to be the single. They were all totally focused on Nothing's Gonna Change My Mind. The demo, all the songs on the demo are not on the record. So we got signed on this demo and Nothing's Gonna Change My Mind, but none of those songs on the record. I wrote a complete batch of songs after that, which included uh, Taking It Back, Walk Right In, Dead of the Night, Glued to the Radio, all the songs are on the record written after we got the deal. Uh, so when they came through and they heard Taking It Back, they were like, well, that's that's the single. And nothing's gonna change my mind. I was like, yeah, that's a good song. Get up 
in the morning. When we wake you up, the clock radio. Get in the car. What was the first thing you do after turning on the car? Turn on the radio. Uh, this is before MP3. Before iPads and iPods and iPhones. Before satellites. Before music TV. Before all that shit, there was the radio. Nothing like the thrill of hearing your song on the radio for the first time. When it goes from being a fantasy in your mind to being a reality, it's being broadcast out across through the airways. That magic. I said there must be something more to life. getting old. And then a song come on the radio. You got to turn it up just as high as it go. Don't be afraid, Louise. Turn it up. Now maybe it don't sound like much, but when you turn it up a touch, What you don't know.
sides to a record, you would save the second to last song on the side for the kind of so-so track. Well, to me anyway, this album didn't have so-so tracks. So it ended up being just kind of like a toss of a coin, what's going to be the fourth song on the, on the album. This is the one that won out on the second side. This is one of my favorite songs that I've ever written, this is a song called Alibis that Donnie's going to sing for us. We met through his promise. He's a great. I 
back with more Breathless and MSB. so much to the band. Uh, Kevin Valentine was the drummer, uh, Bob Benjamin's the bass player, Alan Green was the lead guitar, Mark Evsek, he was the uh, keyboard player, and of course Rod was a percussion player. Rod was the percussion player. <laughs> when we would uh, be rehearsing, for the albums, I would bring in songs. I wrote a lot of, a lot of songs at the time. And I would bring in almost a new song every, every rehearsal. Uh, and I just I loved the players in the band. They were pretty much hand-picked uh, because of their talent. And I would say, okay, here is the song. Now impress me. You know, Show me what you come up with, what you're imagining for, for this song and the parts that you play. We had a little <clears throat> cassette player, cassette recorder that we'd always run in the background. So we could capture if any magic happened, and uh, so I brought in this song, uh, "Walk Right In," and we were we were running it down and playing it. And Rod's coming in, coming up with these ideas, and Kevin and I said, uh, I said to Mark Essek, I said, okay, there's this the open section here, and this this chord change thing that happens right here. This is a, a keyboard solo, you know. Like, let's go through it a few times and show me what you got. So you know, the first time he did, he always did something good. Like around the third time he played through it, and it was like it was what you hear on the record. Uh, it was Mark. That was you know, get the end of the song. Mark, that was great, man. I love it. He goes, what I play, <laughs> and that's why we ran the cassette player so we could go back and said, "This is what you did, Mark. This is what you got to do. This is just great." And that's what you hear on the record is that part that, that we the little bit of magic and you know, the lightning in the jar that we grabbed right at that moment. So anyway, that was a fabulous band, great people, great players that I uh, I really loved working with. And now with these guys, you know, we get together once, twice a year, and it's incredible for me because we've worked together for years and years and years in, uh, in different bands, and uh, it's always an extreme pleasure to be working with these guys. <laughs> so let's continue on with uh, another uh, Breathless tune from the second album.
It's always interesting to see which tunes you write that really stick with people. And this is one of the wasteful times, definitely a song that stuck with me. So I've been working on a new album, which will be out later this year. And it's about Cleveland. And it's kind of, sort of, not really autobiographical because it's, when you hear it, when you hear it, you'll see it's fiction and sort of science fiction. <laughs> but it's a real rocker, and it kind of jumps back to the my core kind of music, the big hooks, big guitars, and synthesizers. Uh, so I'm looking forward to it coming out later this year, and keep your eyes out for it on Facebook. You know, of course, I'll announce it a thousand times. So <laughs> Yeah. 
to ghost poets. <laughs> Rodney was in the ghost poets. Mistake about it. Rob was in there. So and, was uh, Dobit. So was Dobit. That's right. E Rock. E Rock was in there. We were the ghosts. We were the poets. <laughs> we were the ghosts. Jennifer was kind of a ghost and a poet. She it? was both. Yeah, she double dips. <laughs>
Danny Powers on the guitar. Rick Williger on the harmonica. Here. Put your hands together, come on! We're gonna strike it up one time, that means we're all gonna strike it up one time. You gonna help me count it off? I said you're gonna help me count it off? One!
the percussion, the wild band on the tin cans, Mr. Rodney Sanger. since high school, Rick Williger. Play that harp for me, Ricky.
request is I want to see you all again real soon. Let's do this again. Let's not wait so long. Good night, love you all.